G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, we're going to be having a look at not the Mystere 4A. We uh, don't quite have our hands on that just yet, and I will be looking to get my hands on it very shortly. So today, we're going to be having a look at its uh, supposed bigger brother, the Super Mystere B2. Now, the B2 is technically the first supersonic uh, jet that was made in Europe, but that's basically because they took it to high altitude, threw it off a cliff, and saw it go above Mark 1. To me, this plane is definitely a subsonic and sits at uh, 9.0 with a little bit of, not quite controversy, but I, I don't really think it's terribly competitive, but that's probably just to the way the plane is. This plane has some okay acceleration, but it doesn't have good energy retention in a turn, making it a very, very bad dogfighter. So you would kind of expect to play this plane for speed, but it compresses at high speeds. So... <laughs> What are we supposed to do with this thing? Well, the answer is quite simple. You are a support fighter. The Super Mist Air is not a plane that you are meant to be getting into heavy dogfights with because you're just going to lose too much speed and of course most planes are just going to be able to out-energy you in a dogfight. This plane is supposed to be basically used to zoom around the map at medium to high speeds about 700 to 900 kilometers per hour and you're basically meant to pick off planes that are slow. This is not one of those planes that you can energy fight with unless you're super, super conservative. And of course, this isn't a plane that you can just zoom around hoping to get away from everyone because you're basically going to be facing everyone else who is at least a shred faster than you. And if not, they will have the acceleration to catch you in a straight line. That being said, the SMB2 isn't all pain, but I have had an ex basically a negative experience playing this plane. I have consistently had a poor experience. It, it really sucks, and the only way for this plane to be insanely good is in lots of down tiers. But, of course, we're not really getting lots of down tiers at 9.0, and you know what, that's fine. That's kind of the way War Thunder is meant to be. You're not meant to get down tiered all the time. Of course, it would be nice to have a fair share of down tiers, but we don't really live in a perfect world, do we? So we have to make the most with what we're dealt with, and that's kind of what we're going to do here. That being said, about the SMB2, it's not an unfun plane. It can be quite painful, but it can also be, in certain circumstances, quite rewarding, and I wanted to show you this particular match today. Our first victim here is going to be at the uh, hands of an AIM-9B. The AIM-9B is actually fairly capable in this tier. You just have to get your enemies that are distracted, and of course, the moment an enemy turns, the AIM-9B is basically useless, unless your opponent is going at sub-600. At that point, they are very, very easy pickings, and sub-600 is kind of where you want to be firing your AIM-9Bs at. Of course, you want to be using a range of 2.0 kilometers or less, maybe 2.5 if you're feeling a bit feeling a bit lucky, but of course, the Super Mist Air is best off with as many kills with those AIM-9s as possible. You only have two, and of course, being a little bit conservative is the way to go. Now, that F5 does an absolute gamer move and slams himself into the ground upside down because Shen Yang Gang Gang locks up, unfortunately. Now, the PFM here has gotten himself into a bit of a pickle, and of course, being me, I miss like a colossal idiot. Now, what we're going to do is go up into a vertical, store a lot of that energy as, uh, sorry, a lot of that speed as energy, and then redive on the PFM. I can pretty much sit behind this PFM here because basically I got to him first, and if he had gotten to me first, then it probably would have been a done deal for me. I set him on fire, and uh, like I said, done deal. Very, very easy. Now, I have to turn my attention away from the PFM to this G91. Now, the G91 has fairly good acceleration, but a low top speed, as opposed to the Super Mist Air, who has a pretty decent top speed compared to the G91, but of course it has low acceleration. F5 decides that he might want some uh, little AIM-9B fun, and of course, boom, off he goes, nice and easy. Now, this is where the pain starts for me. I'm going to go into a vertical dogfight with the Shen Yang, and this is my first mistake. I shouldn't be going into a dogfight with him, because he can basically out-energy me. Have a look at how quickly he's able to burst away, even though I'm re-diving on him. And this is what I don't like about the SMB2. This doesn't mean that it's a bad plane. It just means that there are certain issues with this plane that make me sort of dislike it. I want that to be extremely clear. You are not always going to have a bad experience in this plane, and there are going to be people that enjoy this plane and think it is competitive. But personally for me, I think that it is just too hard to play to enjoy, and uh, in some cases it's just, it's just strange. And the oddities, unless you're highly familiar with them, are really not going to be paying off for you. 
have a look at how much I'm struggling to keep up with this Shenyang F5. Granted, it is basically a MiG-17 with uh, steroids, basically. A MiG-17 on steroids, let's call it that. Now, because I'm out of 9Bs, I don't have any other things that can, uh, can really sort of catch this F5 in a sort of run away from me. So I have to just pursue and kind of hope for the best. And this is where the SMB2 goes from a dogfighter to a support fighter. You have to have that high speed ready. And if you bleed it, it's going to be a little bit to, to sort of get it back. Now I am communicating with this Harrier, and the Harrier needs to stay fast, and his engines have been damaged. So any turning is going to result in a lot more loss in airspeed than it will uh, sort of benefit me. So I have to try and keep myself as fast as I can, and try and clean up someone just so that this Harrier can make it back to base. Now, I have noticed the G91, and the G91 is quite a threat to the Harrier considering that the Harrier might need to travel in straight lines and it can potentially be out accelerated by the uh, enemy here. G91 goes for a bit of a non-head-on uh, and then turns in front of me and of course me being me I miss. This is partly me not being used to the guns being underneath the fusel fuselage and in a strange spot but uh, a part of me is also a little bit skeptical about the accuracy of these particular cannons. A little bit more of a head-on, again, no dice. And now having a look at that turn that I've used to get myself away from the G91, I've realized now that I can pretty much barely energy fight this thing. The G91's acceleration is just so damn good that if he wanted to go into the vertical, he probably could have had me, provided that he had an extra maybe 120 or 200 kilometers per hour of airspeed. Now this F5 here is going to come back and I need to spray a little bit just to try and get the shots off and I just managed to dodge those bullets. This plane is absolutely, like I said, not a dogfighter and you really need to treat it like that. So when it does come push to shove, it is really, really hard to actually get what you need out of the plane. So I'm going to roll and I've got my flaps out just so I have a little bit more turning and I am sacrificing so much damn airspeed trying to get this guy and unfortunately I just can't make the shots line up. Now the Shenyang goes into the vertical and the G91 kills my Harrier friend so unfortunately for me I am basically left here on my own. My fuel I have enough of it but I, I need ammunition and I need friends and that's the two things that I am starting to run out of very very quickly. The F5 is looking at me once again and the G91 is coming back so I need to build up my speed. I'm going to go for a bit of a spray here and hopefully I can make something work but unfortunately no dice again. I'm going to check the Shenyang and he has sort of headed back to base and of course I have a friendly A4E heading in to give me a little bit of a hand. The hope here is to basically bait the G91 for the A4E and hopefully hopefully I can get him before he manages to missile me and this missile does come in kind of close. But it's also made me turn, which puts me in a shitty situation for the G91 as well as the A4. So I'm going to barely, barely dodge those bullets and go over on top. The only reason why I think that I'm managing to stay on top of this dogfight is because the A4E is right behind me. Now the A5, uh, the AB8A comes in and manages to barely, barely uh, sort of scrape past the A4. The missile is very close and he's whilst he's down to only one missile we're in a very shit situation here we both don't have speed the Shenyang has probably gone back to base but I don't want to risk it and of course the AV8 has come in fresh with aim 9 G's I miss again because of my aim and whilst my aim has been a big contributor to the sort of lackluster performance here that I've displayed in game it has also been partially due to the performance of this plane just not accelerating to the way that I would really like it to be now thankfully the AV8 goes for the A4E and of course that uh, aim 9 g misses because he's being a little bit too uh, I guess ambitious there and maybe the A4E has some flares left so I'm gonna sort of try my luck here with the uh, with the Defas or the uh, Aidens. Unfortunately no, neither of us get any shots onto each other and uh, I think it's basically just time to run back to base. The A4E has got a similar idea and the AV8 will catch him in a straight line. There's not a whole lot that I can really do. I can barely even accelerate away from the G91. And whilst I'm being negative about this plane I do want to stress that 
the, this is not always the case. You won't always have to be put in a 1v1 dogfight or a 2v2 dogfight like this. But when it comes to push to, when push comes to shove, this plane does tend to fall down by the wayside a little bit. And for me, that's kind of disappointing. I would really have hoped that this plane would be a little bit stronger in its performance. But honestly, does it really warrant a battle rating decrease? I don't really know. I, I just can't put my finger on it. Personally, it's it's frustrating to play. This plane is definitely painful to play. But having a team to back you up is really important. So perhaps if you played it in a squad of four or a squad of three or two or whatever, you could potentially get a little bit more out of the plane than, say, I could while playing solo. This might be a plane to play with teammates. And for those of you that are actually successful in this plane and enjoy it and find the performance to be quite good, you let me know. What should I do? Like, what is the better course of action for this plane? Maybe it does require teamwork. Maybe it does require a little bit more skill that I can't really bring to the table. So there's always a chance, like, or that I could be wrong, of course, but there's always room to improve with War Thunder. And so for those of you that actually know, do let me know in the comment section below, because for this plane, it is just... It, it's just strange, and for me, I, I just can't get around the sort of abnormalities about this plane. The fact that it bleeds speed so quickly, and the fact that it compresses at high speed, the fact that it doesn't accelerate quite as well as any of the other planes at 9.0 or 8.7 or some of the 8.3s. For me, this plane is a very strange thing indeed. Maybe it should be just a missile carrier. Maybe it's only worth that. I think it's for you guys in the comment section to sort of let me know how I go. Of course, this isn't the end of the match. This is basically only the beginning. We are going to just go into a, a bit more of a, an interesting dogfight in the future. And uh, this plane. Overall, I have unfortunately had quite a negative experience. But uh, like I said, just because it means, or just because you can see me getting lots of kills here, uh, doesn't mean that that's my whole experience. Like every other War Thunder YouTuber, I pick the most interesting games to have a look at. Of course, being cherry-picked a little bit, having a look at the higher kill games, because they're more entertaining. Frankly, who wants to watch games where I get two kills and then get absolutely dogpiled? Because this is kind of what happens with the SMB2. You kind of have the habit of getting dogpiled. And that's really not what I want to show, uh, despite that being, you know, not, not necessarily the truth, though, because it's not the whole truth. But it certainly isn't entertaining, and it certainly isn't interesting to watch. Uh, I would rather sort of convey my frustrations or my disapproval of a plane through my voice rather than the gameplay behind me and so what we're going to do is skip a little bit forward to a bit of a, an interesting part now in this particular match like i've said it's a little bit out of the ordinary and i get all very very lucky in this match for those of you that might have the volume turned up and might be able to hear or maybe you've got headphones on you might have heard that there was a plane that flew past I couldn't see it, the spotting system didn't give me any dice there, until about 3 kilometers, where I've spotted the AV-8A, and I'm basically going to turn around and try and follow the AV-8A, see if I can get some kills onto him, maybe sneak up on him, because the AV-8A is probably going to be my biggest threat. Everyone here has returned back to base and has fresh missiles, so I really need to make sure that I am potentially getting the uh, performance here and killing the people that I need to kill. So. SMB2 in a straight line, we are picking up a little bit of speed, but we're also climbing, so this thing isn't too bad at those sort of higher altitudes, but of course it's the low altitudes that really make the difference, because these are the ones where all the dogfights occur, and these are the ones where your team basically gravitates to towards the ends of the match, and this is where that type of little bits of performance, those sort of small increments of performance, are a lot more vital than otherwise. So. What am I doing here? Basically just stalking this AV-8. I know he doesn't have RWR, but my little radar thing, uh, I think I think it'll trigger it, but I'm not really sure. So I'm just going to sit behind him. I'm going to wait for that sort of 3 kilometer area to open up with the missile. And because I'm at higher altitude, the AIM-9B actually, actually has a little bit more range as such, because there's just less air resistance. And of course, I send one on its way. Because he's traveling in a roughly straight line, the AIM-9B is able to quite easily predict where he's going to land. And of course, the missile strikes home quite nicely. Now, I spot that G-91 10 and something kilometers away. I honestly don't know why. And that's one of the things that I talk about when I talk about the spotting system being a little bit whack. I would really, really like that to be a little bit more consistent. And speaking of consistent, at 1.5, the F5 has come in, and I'm going to go for a vertical dogfight. Now, why do I choose a vertical dogfight when I lost the one before? And that's quite simple. 
because what I want is I want the F5 to overshoot and to bring in the bread by himself. So I'm going to cut in underneath and the F5 is going to clearly miss as you can see and then I'm hoping just to bleed enough speed to sort of sit right behind him and get a nice reversal. Unfortunately for me I just miss once more and I am just about to get my shot again when uh, I can hear something in the background. I can hear something approaching and it turns out that it is the G91 and you can see him flashing there on the little radar. I fire a 9B, a 9B barely misses me and the G91 way overcooks his mark allowing me to try and scoop in on the back. There we go again with some unlucky shots and because I bled so much speed I'm basically able to get a reversal in not quite landing the shots once again but basically it's game over for the G91 because he is well in front of me. He's overcooked himself and because I'm able to stave off so much speed by uh, basically turning and the G91 has put himself into another turn, I am pretty much able to just, with one hit, set him on fire and that's game. How bloody lucky is that? That, that never happens. What did I do to please the snail? Clearly not play the SMB2 because this thing you just need so much luck to play this thing and in this particular match luck is exactly what I got I ca cannot believe just how lucky I got this match M9B's missed my whole team despite disappearing still manages to get enough kills to and waste enough missiles for everyone to sort of have to switch to guns and for them to not have great gun skills I, I don't know I'm, I'm genuinely lost for words but this particular match has just stood out to me as something incredibly lucky. Six kills in the SMB2, I've never gotten that because this plane is a bit of a turd to be honest. And it's just those little things that make it a little bit frustrating to play that uh, have seemed to have gotten me through this match. So maybe I shouldn't be ratting out this plane, maybe I should be praising it instead, but that's for you guys to decide with your likes and dislikes. I, I do hope you hit like on this video though because the algorithm the, the algorithm monster under the under the bed, under the YouTube video, really likes likes. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. I sincerely appreciate your time. I sincerely appreciate you coming to this video, watching, commenting, and engaging with the community. So, if you would like to do that a little bit more, I have created a YouTube Shorts channel and a TikTok as well for those of you that do that sort of stuff. Um, I will be uploading soon. I just have to get some stuff sorted out in the meantime. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.